ओम सना स नो गुणक्त सह वीर कर्वाहे तेजस्वीनावदितमस्तु मिद्विषावह ओ शांति 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 डियर स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस ऑन अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कंडीशन दट इज इप्सिलेटल फ्रैक्चर ऑफ फ्यूमरल शाफ्ट एंड नेक नाउ इट इज नॉट फॉर नथिंग that femoral neck fractures are infamously called unsolved fractures the statement from the watson johns that we come into the world under the brim of the pelvis and go out through the fracture neck of the femur aptly sums up the enormity of the challenges posed by these fractures both to the patient and to the orthopedic surgeons what sends the surgeons scurrying out for the cover is the twin threat of non union and avian associated with fracture neck of the femur femoral shaft fractures on the other hand pose a different set of problem different from the ones encountered in the neck fractures nonetheless they are no less challenging than the neck fractures but the saving grace is that we the orthopedic surgeons are spared the ignominy of encountering union problems and this spares us the blushes now imagine the gravity of problem when both these injuries coexist in the same bone thanks to those injury forces that rattles both the shaft and the neck simultaneously however the impact of these enormous loads are first taken up by the relatively sturdy shaft thus blunting the forces to a greater extent by the time they reach the neck and this is no doubt strong enough to cause a neck fracture but fortunately is weak enough to cause significant displacement that are seen in case of the isolated neck fractures what a combination of these two injuries does is to provide a double trouble to the surgeons the first trouble who first have to detect it and then second pull out a right combination of treatment plan a missed neck fracture causes considerable embarrassment to a surgeon and places him on a very sticky wicket this is what makes these injuries unique and fear sir coming to the epidemiology the incidence part first the good news these are relatively rare injuries and the overall incidence reported in the world literature is around 2.5% this has been quoted in few studies first by winquest et al in a study of 520 cases later again in a study of 300 cases ipsilateral trochanteric fractures are still rare and only 50 cases have been reported so far in the world literature now the bad news in about 20 to 30% of the cases at the time of initial presentation the detection of the fractured neck femur is often missed over attention to the fracture of the shaft of the femur lulls the treating orthopedic surgeons into a state of complacency and the fact that there could be an associated fracture above slips is noticed he fails to order the an x ray of the hip that could have helped him detect the fracture or the x rays ordered may be taken improperly with no proper internal rotation of the hip the only way to overcome this iatrogenic sleep is to have a high degree of suspicion of the presence of this twin fractures especially in the patient with the high velocity accidents missing fracture neck femur at the initial diagnosis is a bad deal 
simply because of the development of notorious complications like non-union and AVN due to the delay in the diagnosis and management. Nonetheless, these twin threats are comparatively less, about 10% when compared to the isolated events of fractured neck femur, it is 10 to 30%, thanks to the less displacement encountered in these fractures. Coming to the causes, the first cause needless to say, high velocity road traffic accident due to car or motorcycle, usually head on collisions. Secondly, violent falls from the great heights. Thirdly, catastrophic industrial and agricultural accidents. And fourth, the natural calamities like earthquake, floods, etc. The other vital statistics include the age, average age is 34 years, with a range of 3 to 76 years. It is rare in children. The 78% of the cases are males and 22% are females. Associated multiple and multiple injuries, multi-system injuries may be up to 44%. Associated hip fractures seen in 0.8 to 8.6%, average being 2.5%. The diagnosis is missed in 20 to 30% of the cases. Coming to the mechanism, high velocity injuries causing axial loading of an abducted femur as you can see here a person driving a two wheeler where usually the thigh is kept in abduction. It could lead to the fracture shaft of the femur and neck fracture. Now due to the weakening of these forces as they travel proximally, the fracture neck of the femur is either undisplaced or minimally displaced. If there is a trochantic fracture, it tends to be transverse. The distribution of these fractures is as follows. Subcapital fractures 2%, mid cervical fractures 21%, basic cervical fractures 39%, per trochantic fractures 14% and intertrochantic fractures 24%. Coming to the clinical features, patient could present in shock. There could be multi-system injuries of the head, spine, trunk, abdomen, pelvis. Look out for this. Then pain, swelling, gross external rotation deformity and other signs of the fractures are extensively present as shown in this particular picture. Investigation-wise, hemoglobin, hemogram like HB percent, BTCT, blood group, random sugar, etc. Just like for any other major surgery. Then X-rays. X-rays to be done before the surgery in the casualty and again in the OT after stabilizing the femoral shaft fractures. And this includes X-ray of the shaft of the femur. The recommended views are AP and lateral views of the shaft. And X-ray of the hip. If the pelvis X-ray do not show a fracture, try to do an x-ray of the hip in internal rotation. As an external rotated limb due to the shaft and the neck fractures may cause the fractures to be missed initially. Bone scan in a people who complains of hip and groin pain following stabilization of the femoral shaft fractures must be done to rule out the associated fracture neck femur. CT scan to detect the occult hip fracture in a polytrauma patient can be advised. Then coming to the methods of treatment, conservative method, this, this is mentioned only for the sake of completion. There is very little role of conservative treatment in these fractures as prolonged hospitalization may lead to the fetal pulmonary complications. Surgery. This is the treatment of choice, or uh, the treatment method of choice in these fractures. There is no dispute over that, over the fact that both these fractures need to be fixed surgically. But there is a fierce debate over which fractures to be fixed first and what should be the choice of hardware in fixing these fractures. Now let us consider the first debate. Which fractures to be fixed first? 
shark first or neck first this has led to an animated discussion and has clearly divided surgeons into two groups one favoring early shark fixation and neck fixation later while the second group is equally vociferous in advocating the neck fixation first and shark fixation next the first group argues that the stabilization of the femoral shark fracture first helps in better reduction and fixation of the neck fractures whereas the second group feels that fixing the neck fracture should be the top priority to keep the troublesome avn and non union at an arms distance but ironically the incidence of avn and non union in these combination fractures is rare when compared to the isolated neck fractures due to the reason already mentioned but still the advocates of this method vociferously argue that one needs to fix the neck first to prevent these very complications which are seldom reported now coming to the choice of fixation for the neck here there is no much argument and the choice seems to be two cannulated screws and for shaft here the choice is between the plate fixation and the intramedullary fixation though plate fixation makes the technique of screw fixation for fracture neck of the femur easier it has not found universal favor due to higher rate of complications like infection non unionity when compared to the intramedullary fixation and hence it is the intramedullary fixation that has found the universal favor now coming to the methods of fixation in the world literature more than 60 methods of fixation have been documented since these are complex injuries in the, the method of fixation are also complex surgeons are divided over the choice of the method of fixation simply because nobody seems to know the perfect choice now let us explore the options of the fixation the first option open reduction and internal fixation with lax screw for fracture neck femur and kefalo medullary nail for the fracture shaft femur second option femoral neck fixation with the screws and retrograde nailing through the intracondylar root third option conventional interlocking nailing and cannulated screw fixation for neck fractures so first doing nailing and then fixing the neck Fourth option, Russell Taylor record nails. They have been specifically designed for this combination of injuries. This nail allows the fixation of neck fracture with the two self-compressing lax screws and the kefalo medullary nail to fix the shaft fracture. Here again, the priority is to fix the neck fracture first after obtaining its anatomical reduction. The various authors like Russell and Ian. golden how one petal have all reported successful results with very few complications like non union or avn then another choice is a retrograde femoral nailing through the intracondylar notch of the distal femur has also been reported integrated intramedullary nailing with the placement of cancellous lax screw around the nail is another technique described by benet and associate they reported 100% union after 26 months follow up chaturvedi and sau fixed the femoral neck fractures first with multiple screws and then did the integrated nailing for the femoral shaft fractures they reported very good results with all the fractures uniting by 6 months and there was no incidence of avn dc plating of the femoral shaft fractures with lax screw fixation of the neck is another method of treatment Now this method is easy, reliable, can be done in the centers that do not have the facilities. It does not disturb the proximal femur to implant the neck. But the disadvantage being increased blood loss, increased periosteal stripping leading to union problems and also potential need for the bone grafts. then reconstruction nail that can be locked distally and proximal placement of the two compression screws anterior and posterior to the nail seams to be 
a better option. Coming to the complication of this joint lesion, this can be discussed under two heads, complication related to the fractured neck of the femur and complications related to the fracture shaft of the femur. So while considering the complication related to fracture neck of the femur, the, in this combination injuries is one that is more troublesome and requires utmost skill on the part of the surgeon to prevent it from happening in the first place. The twin devastating complications are avian and non-union, you all know it. Avian in a young adult, there can never be more devastating complication than this. Not that this happens only where there is a combination fractures. It is as much seen even in the isolated neck fractures to the tune of 5 to 8 percent for the undisplaced fractures and 9 to 35 percent for the displaced fractures. In contrast, ironically though, avian happens less often in ipsilateral fractures with a rate of just 0 to 2 percent. Now this is because with these injuries, the displacement of the neck fracture is considerably less and most of the forces that cause the femoral shaft fractures weaken by the time there is the neck. Philosophically, I feel God compensates for the tragedy of twin fractures by toning down its complication. Despite this, we keep emphasizing that detecting these fractures early and fixing it securely is the mantra to avoid the troublesome avian and next to be discussed non-union. Now the non-union part, majority of the authors hold, hold the breath. They report 100% union rate for both these fractures. But however, not all that successful, now consider uh, the statistics, Wies et al. reported 18% incidence of non-union in those patients treated with interlocking nailing for fracture shaft. Shaheen and Bader, they reported 25% incidence of non-union in patients treated with the fixed angle nail plate. And those, this throws up a question is the non-union device related? Bennett et al. they reported a non-union incidence of 3% in displaced fractures. Now these are fortunately and mercifully rare and include the other complications related to fracture shaft femur. They include the femoral shaft malunion and shortening, the femoral shaft non-union, WU and C, the 15% uh, developed non-union in the femoral shaft fracture uh, in their cities and all these cases had open reduction and internal fixation leading to excessive soft tissue and bony devitalization due to the periosteal stripping and loss of blood etc. In conclusion, the ipsilateral fracture shaft femur and the non-union are relatively rare injuries and are due to the high-speed road traffic accident. Neck fractures are frequently missed, leading to the possibility of complications like avian and non-union. And hence, a high degree of suspicion is required for the presence of these fractures and the hip x-ray is mandatory in all femoral shaft fracture cases. Both these fractures need to be surgically fixed and it is now more or less settled that the fractured neck femur should be fixed first to avoid the above said complications from developing, cannulated screw fixation for the fractured neck femur and the intermedullary fixation for the fracture shaft femur seems to be the ideal combination. Good fixation is achieved recently by the second generation Russell Taylor interlocking nails. Now before we end. I want to talk to you about one more important topic, happy key to lose weight. Dear students, one of the commonest problems we are facing in our routine clinical orthopedic practice is of obesity. Eat less and exercise more formula for treating obesity has been proved to be the failed formula. Of late, I have been working on the latest, most scientific, evidence-based concept of weight loss, happy key. 
you may find few videos on this topic as well on my youtube channel the obesity among the medical students is at its peak nowadays due to obesity not only they are bullied but most of them also lose their self-confidence resulting in deteriorating performance in academics for all of them this online video course will be most valuable if interested you may visit my facebook page the happy key or my website www.drsudhir.com for details of this course i recommend you all to watch my above mentioned video completely you can enroll for the course you may forward that video to others this is available on youtube the youtube link is given below you can also attend my two hours paid workshop on sundays from 1 pm to 3 pm the registration fees is 299 rupees only for registration link contact me on my whatsapp number 79971683316 register now my mission is to help more than 10 lakh people to lose weight and get lifetime freedom from their obesity without dieting and exercising using this happy key technique let us all come together to create a healthy and fit india please like my channel subscribe it now and do recommend it to all your colleagues from other medical colleges please help me to help medical students all over the country your recommendation matters a lot for me for thank you thank you for your subscription if not visited yet please do visit my youtube channel like it share it and subscribe it thank you